Last thing on these kind of rules that we've got here is you probably know about the how to find the area of a non-right angle triangle. Um, we probably know about this from GCSE. Just a quick reminder though, if the triangle ever has got a right angle in it, please just do base times height divided by two, okay? You could, in theory, pretend that this is your angle that's in between, and you could do a half times h times b times the sine of the angle that's in between them, but the sine of 90 is just one. So if you ever have 90 degrees, please don't use the sine rule, and please don't use uh, th this area formula that we've got down here. You can, and it will work, but it's just like, it's like trying to use like the quadratic equation to try and solve like, x squared equals 4. Like, you would never use the quadratic equation to solve something that simple, so you shouldn't do that for this kind of thing. So let's um, just really quickly remind ourselves of this. I've got a triangle here with these two sides and the angle that is inside. It's the angle that's contained in between them. And you can tell it's the angle that's contained between them from the formula, because the area is a half AB and then sine C. You've got three different letters. So normally, if this was side C, this would be angle C. If this was side A, this would be angle A. And if this was side B, this would be angle B. So clearly you can see you've got A, B, and capital C, which means it's a side, a side, and the angle that is enclosed between them. That's really how I remember this. So I've said here as a tip, you shouldn't have to label the sides and angles before using the formula. Just remember that the angle is between the two lines. So really easily for this one, the area is just a half times three times seven times the sine of 59 degrees, which is 9.00 centimeters squared. And by writing 9.00 centimeters squared, I'm telling you that it's been rounded. It's not exactly nine, but actually it is, happens to be nine to two decimal places, okay? The reason that this actually ends up as being this formula, and you don't need to know this bit here, but just as a quick side note, you could actually pretend that this is the, the base of the triangle, and then the height of the triangle is this one that we've got here. The height of this triangle, if this is 90 degrees, can anybody think they can tell me what the height of this triangle is if you just look at this small one that I've got here? If I just quickly draw that smaller triangle that I've got here, you don't need to know this, but this is just an extra bit. What's this height here, if this is 90? So you get that sine 59, oh no, maybe I've done that diagram wrong. Oh yeah, so this is sine 59 equals h over three. So h equals three sine 59. So this is 3 sine 59. So you've got the base, which is 7, times by the height, which is 3 sine 59, divided by 2. So it is actually just base times height divided by 2. It's just got this extra bit in here. Don't write that down if you, if you just need to know the formula. I just thought I'd show you that what you do, the reason this formula works is because it's taking a non-right-angled triangle and it's actually finding the height of it. That's what it's actually doing. So I'm just going to do two examples, and then you're going to do some practice as homework. So they've told us that the area of this triangle is 10, and we're going to determine x. So we know that the area is equal to a half multiplied by x multiplied by x plus 3 multiplied by the sine of 30. So that's 10 equals a half x x plus 3. What's sine 30? A half. So I've got here, actually, a half times a half is a quarter. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So I get 40 equals x, x plus 3. So 40 equals x squared plus 3x. It's a quadratic. So I get x squared plus 3x minus 40. I'm feeling brave. I'm going to factorize. Can anybody tell me what that factorizes to? Oh, can it factorize? I don't know if it can, actually. x minus? Good. So either x is equal to 5 or x is equal to minus 8. However, that don't make any sense. So x is equal to 5 for that first one that we've got there. This one says that the area of this triangle is also 10. If theta is obtuse, determine theta. So I'm going to start off with the same idea that 10 equals 
And again, I've got a side, a side, and I've got the angle in between them. That's how you can use this if you have the two sides and the angle in between. A half times five times six times the sine of theta. So I've got that 10 equals 15 sine theta. 10 divided by 15, I don't know why I'm using my calculator, 2 thirds is sine theta. And so theta is the inverse sine of 2 thirds, which is 41.8 degrees. Oh, hold up a second. That's the acute angle. But they've clearly told me that this is an obtuse angle. It tells me it in the question. So what do I do? Good. So the obtuse one is 180 minus theta, which is just 180 minus that answer there, which is 138.2 degrees. OK. Super important thing from today's lesson was this idea of finding the other angle for sine as doing 180 minus. Just a quick reminder about why that is true is because on the sine graph, here is the 180. Whatever value the calculator gives you, you can go backwards the same amount and it gives you the same value that you would have on the y-axis. That is so important for sine. If you want to find the other value, you just do 180 minus that. It's not going to be the same for cosine, but that's what we'll be exploring in future lessons. So I'm going to set you a few questions from each of those four exercises, but they're pretty straightforward. Next lesson, we will be doing lots of sine and cosine rule together, and then we will be looking at graphs as well. Very good today. Do I have...